Today I'm going to talk about linear inequalities. Uh, linear inequalities, you tend to have a y and an x. It's two variables. Occasionally you have y is greater than or x is greater than, that sort of thing. I meant to put 5 there. And maybe I have this as well. Now, it's just like graphing linear equations, except instead of having to think about just a line, I need to think about a couple other components. One of those being shading, and the, uh, the other one being uh, whether or not I have a dotted or a solid line. So if I have y is greater than 5x plus 5, if I have my line here, I'm going to make a dot at 5, and then my slope tells me to go up 5 and over 1, so somewhere in here. The difference here is that I need to determine whether or not I'm going to draw a solid line or a dotted line. Either way, it's called a boundary. That's what it's considered to be because it sort of locks in what all the values for y could be. Basically, this says the values for y are anything greater than uh, when I multiply its x value times 5 and then add 5 more to it. So my line in this case, because I have a greater than but not greater than equal to, is a dotted line. And my dotted line on here is going to look really bad. But anyway, the reason it's a dotted line is because the value on the line itself is not included in the solution set. So this point doesn't represent an answer, it just shows you where the boundary starts because y has to be greater than that number. It's kind of like when you have somebody evaluate your uh, property, they put a dotted line between the two properties to sort of see where you and your neighbor share a uh, property because it's not really yours and it's not really theirs. So that's why the dotted line is there. Now I need to think about where values of y are greater. And in general, y values are greater when I go up, so I need to shade up to show that all of these values represent y. So if I have a greater than or less than, I need to make a dotted line. If I have a greater than equal to or a less than equal to, I need a nice solid line. And uh, somebody that I used to teach said that if you have to do more work to write it, you have to do more work to graph it, which makes a little bit of sense to me. So if I have y is less than 2x minus 1, so say I was doing this one, I would go in and I'd be at negative 1, I'd go up 2 and write 1, that whole thing. In this case, it's another dotted line. And then y is next to the little end, so y is less than, so I'd shade down. Um, the other two, for y equals 1 third x plus 1, I would go to 1, make a dot, I'd go up 1 over 3, so it'd be kind of a shallowish rise. And this says y is greater than, so I'd shade up. I use a solid line here because it also includes those values in the answer set. Here, I'd go down to, once again, it'd be sort of shallow going up, sort of like this maybe. And y is less than or equal to, so I would shade down. Let's do a couple uh, that you might see on an assignment, and I think it'll become super clear. It's not that complicated as it is. It would help if I had had the assignment up that I wanted. There it is. It's hidden behind a bunch of other nonsense. Now, this one says y is less than 2x plus 2. First thing I need to understand or get a grip on is the fact that, yeah, this is going to be a dotted line. So you might even want to make a note to yourself that's going to be dotted. To graph it, go to plus 2 and make a dot. Uh, the slope of 2 over 1 tells me to go up 2 and over 1, or down 2 and left 1. y is less than, so I'm going to make a dotted line through these points and then I'm going to shade down. That's one. Uh, the next one tells me that I need to do y is greater than or equal to negative one-half. So in this case I'm going to go to zero and I'm going to go down one and left two or sorry, down one and right two, or up one and left two. I was thinking of multiple things. Now this has a line under it, so I'm going to make a solid line, and y is greater than, so I'm going to shade up. Now, what about the calculator you might be saying right now? I don't want to be bothered with this. Uh, in some cases it's necessary that you be bothered with it, but in others it's not. So let's look at uh, this one, pop up the calculator, y equals helps if you turn it on. Um, 
three fifths. x plus 4 and I need to go over here and show that it is a greater than or it's shading up. The thing about the calculator that you can't do in terms unless you have an app on it uh, which kind of messes with whether it's legal to use or not is that you can't shade and tell that it's dotted line. Now I know that it's a solid line so I'm going to make a note to myself somewhere that yeah I want to have a solid line so maybe I even put on my paper a solid line somewhere. The nice thing about it is that I can actually eliminate a bunch of answers right now. It can't be this one because it's dotted. It can't be this one, and it can't be this one. So it has to be this one. That happens occasionally, but not all. Very rarely does it occur. So anyway, I'm going to go back and finish shading. In order to shade, you need to click over in front of the Y sub one, and then hit Enter a couple times to where it looks like the top is being shaded. If I hit it again, it would show me a, a less than situation. Y is greater than. That's all that matters not its relationship with three-fifths. So hit the uh, graph button. Oh, I forgot to fix my window from one of the ones I was previously doing, so let me go back and fix those really fast. In case you have a bad window, and my Y minimum as well, be helpful if I fix those. And graph it again so I can get an actual look. And as you can see, my solid line does exactly what it says it's supposed to do in A, so that's my answer. Uh, the next type is uh, just a standard form question. Standard form changes a little bit. If you divide by a negative in the last step, you still have to flip it over just like you did when you weren't graphing a linear version. What I want to do in this case is to get y by itself. So I need to get rid of plus 5x and subtract 5x. Those cancel. Negative 5x minus 6. I need to divide everything by 2 because it's still y still not by itself. I did not divide by a negative here so I don't need to flip it over. Negative 5 over 2x minus 3. So um, I'm going to go to minus 3 and make a dot. I'm going to go um, up 5 and left 2 and I'm going to I meant to do 2 there. I don't know what I was thinking doing 1. 2 you could go down 5 too, also if you want, but it's really hard to make that happen. Now, this is a dotted line, so I need to make a dotted line between these two, which is almost ridiculous waste of your time to try to watch me do it. It's embarrassing how bad I am at it. Um, anyway, so that's my line, and I didn't need to flip it, so y is greater than, so I'm actually going to shade up where the y's get bigger. It's pretty close there, but in that case, uh, you could sort of see where it's going. Let's see how close I came to the answer, and there it is. They do a much better job of graphing it than me, but they're a computer. Uh, on the other side of it, 3x plus y is greater. Let's do 3x minus y. So I'm not going to do the one that they suggested I do, because I want to make a point about something. Draw a line, get your x to the other side by subtracting it. If it was minus x, you'd add it, by the way. Now in this case, I need to divide by negative 1. When I divide by a negative in the last step, I need to flip it over. The inequality, I mean. So this becomes less than equal to. And I end up with uh, 3x minus 5. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. I'm going to go down to 5, and it tells me to go up 3 over 1, up 3 and over 1. This is a solid line because there's a line underneath it, which means these answers are actually in the solution set, more or less like that. And since I flipped it, y becomes less than, so I need to shade down because it, that's where it gets underneath it now. So that's it. Make sure that you have all those components there and you'll be fine. That would be uh, linear equations in terms of graphing and in terms of uh, standard and slope-intercept form.